Hi, welcome to Telling Your Dad. I'm Mark. Big hello to all my new subscribers and to my channel members. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for me, please. This week, we're going to be looking at this Hornby train pack, the Bristolian. This is the Bristolian train pack from Hornby. This is a limited edition. Uh, it comes with one engine and three carriages. So here we have a GWR King class number 6009 King Charles II with three carriages, a right hand brake, a left hand brake and a composite. So let's get out of the box and see what it looks like. Let's get it open then. So this is from the Hornby 2015 collection and it's a limited edition so I've got 92 of 1000 and the Hornby catalogue number is R3401. So you can pause the video and have a read of that. That tells you a bit of the history. And then we have the usual sheet from Hornby showing you the oiling points, how to attach the extra detail, uh, disconnecting the tender connections, some disassembly, where the socket is, for the uh, decoder, which is in the tender. And again, how to fit the brake rodding. And also just general routine maintenance, running hints, so running it in, all that sort of stuff. And let's have an actual look at it. So there it is. It's in this nice sort of soft plastic to protect it. So we have the engine and the three coaches, the left and right brake and the corridor composite. So along with it we have these little detail packs, is it? And so in there we have a blanking plate for going at the end of the, the last coach. And also we have some extra couplings in here we can use for close coupling. So we'll have a look at those later on and see how they work. And also here we have brake details, another coupling, and then we've got some vacuum pipes, some number plates, and some extra piping detail and everything to add on. That to one side. So I'll get I'll take them all out. Because I know some people don't like the sound of polystyrene make. So when you've got these wrapped in plastic, you can usually just use that to pull it out. Also on these packages, as you can see there, they have holes in the back, so you can use your finger just to push it through. So I'll carry out, take all these out. Then we can put this to one side. have a close look at the engine. So there it is. It's got some nice detail on it. Some of the axle boxes are picked out. It's got nice line detailing, good application of the livery. It's got some extra added piping, which is nice. Sprung buffers. It's got all wheel pickups I can see on here on the driving wheels. So the engine, the actual motor will be in here. And then it's got wires connecting through to the tender where the socket is. And there's also pickups on the tender. So that will give you good uh, electrical connection, especially when it's going over points or little bits of dead track. So that's nice. You've got six pickups here. And it looks like you've got four. Nope. All the wheels, six wheels, pick up in the tender as well. And then you've got a wired connection with a plug, so you can pull that out, take the screws out, and disconnect the tender. But let's just have a give you a close up look so you can see the detail that is on this. Let's have a look, see what's in the cab. Oh, yes, there's nice detail on there dials, piping, the regulator, brake. 
you've even got the uh, detail of the, the firebox door and also the seating for the fireman and the driver and uh, the coal load actually doesn't look too bad and they've even put it spilling out at the bottom so very nice rivet detail separately fitted rails it's very nice this would be one of Hornby's uh, better detailed so this wouldn't be like a, a railroad range they're basic it's one of their more detailed models and we'll have a look at coaches so here we have 5107 which is the right hand brake third metal wheels uh, detail picked up on the bogies nice handle detail with the Bristolian name boards so when I seen this in the shop I thought I have to get that I lived in Bristol for about 12 years and my uh, other half is a Bristolian so she was actually quite pleased when I bought this she even threatened she might have do the review on it but she chickened out in the end so nice roof detail as well you got the rails the vents Again, it's nicely painted up. Nice lining. The livery application is nice and sharp. There's some end detail in sprung buffers. Let's have a look at there's the composite coach. Again, same detailing, metal wheels, sprung buffers, nice roof detail, and the Bristolian name boards. And the final coach. Which is the left hand. Got a nice GWR symbol on there. Nice detail again. It's got all the coaches have got some lovely underframe detailing as well. And they've got the small type drop link couplings and sprung buffers. So we'll put the coaches to one side. What I'll do next is put the engine on the rolling road, let it run in, and then after that we'll uh, fit the decoder. I've got an 8 pin Hornby decoder here, so we'll fit that in. I'll show you how that fits in. I have it now on my DCC Concepts rolling road. Got power going to the track. Let's give it some juice and see what happens. I mean, it didn't take much at all to get it going, and we'll just go the other direction. So, what I'm going to do now is leave it on about 50% power for about 30 minutes, then swap to the direction for another 30 minutes so it gives a, a good running in. It also tests the loco, make sure there's no issues with it before I go ahead and fit the uh, chip into it. So we'll leave that run in and then we'll come back and we'll look at fitting a chip. Running in's all finished. Half an hour each direction, no problems, run perfectly. So I've got it in my little cradle now to protect it. Uh, there's two screws here I need to pop out so I can take the back of the tender or the the tender cover off and then fit the decoder. And this is just a cheap, uh, cheap uh, little screwdriver set I picked up for a pound in Pineland so it does the job nicely for these these sorts of jobs. So. It out there. there, one screw's popped out. So we'll do this over a desk. And there, that's come off nice and easy. And there we can see the blanking plate is in. 
and we can see pin number one is marked with the triangles and the one. I'm just going to gently prise that off. There. And what I do with these little blanking plates is I keep them in the original box. So if I need them again, I know where to find them. Take the decoder out of this packaging. There. Now this looks like it has a bracket here and a ready-made hole for a speaker. So if you get the sound chip with the speaker, the Hornby one, it'll fit in there nicely. It should work with no problem. But uh, I'm just putting a normal 8-pin chip in here. I'm looking for pin number 1. And you can just about make out there the one. So also the one is also the orange wire. So wherever that's soldered into that will be the number one. So we'll match that up. It's nice when the uh, boards for the chips are in the tender. So let's just line up the pins with the holes and then just gentle pressure you don't want to bend the pins. This is proven to be a little bit tricky. And bent. Nope. And just line them up. doesn't want to go in. So I'm just checking now to make sure there's no damage to any of the pins. No, nope, they're all straight. I've done this loads of times. But as always when you're on camera, it doesn't want to work. There we are. That's it. And then just press down firmly to its home. And that's it. Now before I put the cover on, I'm going to put it on the program track, program it up, and then I'll put it on the track just to test it before I put it back together. So I'll come back to you when I'm ready to test it on the track. Chip's been programmed. Let's uh, give it some power and see what happens. Well, that seems to be working. Change direction. Okay, let's uh, put the tender cover back on and uh, stick it on the track with its coaches and see it going around. Before I put the cover on, just here I've put a little bit of insulation tape around the chip because it's not protected. So this just stops it knocking off anything and causing any shorts and blowing the chip. So let's get the cover on. Let's set it off on its way. There it goes.
I've added four extra coaches. So let's see how it goes up the incline from this standing start. As you can see, it's just four chocolate and cream carriages I've added. And we'll go around to the incline and see how it copes. A little bit of wheel slip, but it seems to be pulling them up no problem at all. A little bit of hesitation. sure if I increase the speed slightly it'll have no problem at all going up that incline. No problem at all. So let's have a look at the close couplings that comes with the set. We'll put them on our carriage and just see how it looks. Here's one of the close couplings. And if we look at that. So that's the gap there. You can see that clearly. And then one of the normal couplings, you can see there's quite a gap there compared with the close coupling. Now there is movement in where the couplings go into, so it should be able to negotiate the curves fine so I would have thought on tighter curves you might get some buffer lock that uh, might run uh, the smallest curve I have on here are fourth radius and we go around that no problem but it could be an issue if you've got tighter curves hope you enjoyed that look my latest purchase when I seen this the Bristolian train pack I just had to have it I got it at Lord & Butler in Cardiff when I was over there a few days ago. Great shop. If you're ever in the area, do look them up. Do go and have a look. I've got a few more purchases I got from there that I'll be going over. So if you've made it this far into the video, hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.